I don't know, but... No, you know what you need, Chantal? You need to get your butt out of the Middle East. You need to go back to Canada, and you need to start living a life that isn't just a big scam. I mean, this is silly. You're, you're going to be 40 years old. You're out here, I mean, following some 29-year-old thinking that he's going to love you and marry you and make a life with you and whatever. Girl, come on. He laughs at you. He makes fun of you. I mean, why do you think you're over there with him? Because you guys are living it up? I mean, yeah, you really look like you're living it up. You really look like you're happy. What you need to do is you need to go back to Canada. You need to start putting in hard work. And you need to, if a relationship is really what you want, if that's your end game in life, I know it is for some people. If that's really what you want, someone to love you, someone to call you baby, someone to give you affirmations, whatever. I mean, slow steps. I mean, whatever. Get on the dating apps. Work on yourself. Get back to a point where you can walk for more than a minute without getting dizzy. I mean, that would, if I were that in that place, that would be my number one priority. Not who's going to call me baby when I put my head down at night. I mean, girl, come on. I mean, you're not going to be able to heal in this environment, let alone thrive. You're talking about energy. You're sitting here telling us how you're about to fall asleep. Uh, So you're getting help. And you want to dunk on Chantel? And that's why I think Shannon and FFG's chemistry is so beautiful, because they're so similar. FFG has to be the hero. That's why she has to always dunk on Chantel with something. Like, when she did the thing with F- uh, BBJ, I stand on this. She did her big one. She did her big one with that one. Especially with the way Chantel was running her mouth, talking about FFG's dogs. and all. When I saw her pull that off, I said, Leave it to Chantel to have me applaud FFG. I was pissed. I was like, this was so good. She trolled the fuck out of you. Oh, my God. So just so we're clear, and you heard it here first. What happened with BBJ, rescuing BBJ? The BBJ rescue um, to FFG will be with um, the 89 LBs are to Amber. You will always hear about it for years to come. Always. That's never going to die. She did her big one. She had to make it public. And for those saying, oh, it was for the money. I think you guys forget. I've said this before. Multiple things can be right at once. She did her big one and definitely helped BBJ. Because at this point, I think almost anybody's better than Chantel. But yes, of course it was for the money. If it wasn't for the money, she would have. she wouldn't have made it public. Of course it was for the money. Are you kidding? The bitch held the whole, she shopped for BBJ's collar on stream. She shopped for a cat to get a Gucci collar for a cat. Of course it was for money. But I'm not gonna take away the fact that like, at least she got BBJ, but yes, it was for money. Yes, it was for content. Are you crazy? That is her 89 LBs, bitch. She is never letting that go. That will always be content in some way. Isms, so. Uh, French fried girls should be worried because Chantal was threatening to sue again. Uh, shadowed that she might have returned to Canada to handle some other business and she would handle that while she was there. Um, I would be terrified if I was French fried girl. So terrified. This is the woman who couldn't even make a vet appointment and she's going to coordinate a multi person lawsuit because she felt duped about her cat being given to somebody else, by her to somebody else. Um, but she couldn't tell you who because the selfish bitch wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go say bye. She handed it to Pete's. Again, many reasons we can't follow through with our commitments. So, um, And Chantal doesn't have much tolerance for distress or discomfort. If something isn't exactly the way she wants to eat it, she's not going to eat it. If it's not the right temperature, she's not going to eat it. Um, so you would think someone as large as her would be much more picky. But, uh, or be much less picky, but actually some of the more morbidly obese people I know are rather picky about their food. And like other folks who deal with addiction, uh, can get pretty nasty if they don't get what they want. How many people think that they've probably fought about food a couple times already? I'm sure he was fine with her coming over, but she probably, she farted out a bunch of promises initially that she was gonna, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym and lose weight and it'll be great and I'll be going to the beach and we'll be travel-beezing. If you're too fat for a plane, you gotta do something. 
because now you can't even get out of there in a hurry if you need to. Um, there's no shame in buying two plain seats if you need them, but if you don't like that you need them or that you're cutting it close to needing them, whose job is it to change the shape of Chantal's body? Yours? Mine? A pill? Some Ozempic? No, it comes down to Chantal and what she chooses to do. At this point, she's had more resources and opportunities and access to treatment over the years that most people don't give a shit how she feels or that she probably can't handle all of her ADLs maybe on her own because she was always such a nasty, self-centered person that her discomfort brings people pleasure. We've heard of schadenfreude. You know, it's the same sort of thing. I don't So we saw some boats pass by while we were hanging out by the riverside and decided after we were done hanging out by the river to see if we could find a dock and take a boat ride ourselves. On our way- It was his hard earned money to try to buy her food that would support her health. And then either she ordered it without him or he came to reason of, look, I don't love you so much that $250 isn't worth risking your health to me. So if you really love me, Chantal, really, really love me, you'll go on there, eat yourself half to death, and give me the cash. So, I don't know. So and she wants privacy. Okay. And uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? He's out with the boys. Thailand, from what I understand, has a very, very active sex scene. So, um, I'm sure he'll text you. But at any rate, this week we're going to... But she's sitting there, not a lot of people around, but it was the old eyes darting. Remember the outhouse? Or going for Burger King and then sitting in the parking lot, full face of makeup, looking all over the place to see who's looking and who's watching. She's out proud and doesn't care, but hawks like she's ashamed of what she's engaging in. So when she's sitting there with Sala eating, and there's people, you know, not a lot of people, because they go everywhere when it's closed. She's afraid of people, and they want to be able to film, and they're weird. They're weird. She likes getting attention, but standing out doesn't really... Like, I think she probably feels like people are staring, because they are staring. It's a spectacle. She's four times the size of a normal woman. So I think people are going to stare. That's, that shouldn't be unexpected. Is it rude? Is it cruel? I don't know. Bottom line, it shouldn't be unexpected. And to act shocked would be kind of stupid as well you've read about it a little bit and saw it on TikTok. Please look better after yourself. Take better care of yourself. If not you, for your husband that you told us you love so much, how much do you love him if you're willing to eat yourself to death? Because it's too difficult to try to get better. Beyond 36 hours. If you're a I'm not a 12-stepper, but the bondage of self. She's so obsessed with meeting her own wants and needs that she, to her inadvertently, steps on people and hurts people in that way. There's another side of Chantal that is a complete sociopath and pretty much doesn't care about feelings, doesn't know how to act. That's why we had the, the wedding cake and candles and she erupted like she was gonna shit her pants because she doesn't know what happiness feels like so she doesn't demonstrate what it looks like. She doesn't know love. She doesn't know any of those feelings. And so with all this spinning in her head, her marriage on the line, her citizenship being up, she goes on a diet. One, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot, and I, I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Number one, I'm pretty. Okay, guys, so this is the trailer um, for Femme. Um, it's been released in Europe, but it's out. It's a thriller, and it's a, I've seen it. It's a fantastic film. It is out in Spain, and it is out in the U.S., um, on March the 22nd. So here is the trailer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
man in his high heels. <laughs> well, you can't turn around if you're a fucking man. You're letting them win. How do you want to deal with that? I think you're nice looking at them. On your front. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. I get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Oh, you're not. You're a fucking big man. I'm best remember not to fuck with you then. Hi, guys. And welcome to Taylor Talk. So, guys, first of all, I want to talk about FFG, French Fried Girl, and the dispensary business. Now, I know that some of you are going to be like, you know, you're talking about FFG for clout and for this one. And for this one, I've got to say no. I'm not talking about her for clout. I'm talking about FFG because personally, I think that she's problematic and getting more and more problematic by the day. And the dispensary business kind of made me kind of see how unhinged she is. So if anybody doesn't know what happened, FFG went to multiple um, weed shops, multiple dispensary stores, um, asking the workers if foodie shops there. And I think that's crazy. It's just alarming to me that FFG is proudly cow tipping cons- with foodie all the time. And FFG tries to make it seem like cow tipping is normal behavior and it's not. Now, FFG, is making this a habit. So let's go over this. First of all, there was the fashion show that was in FFG's hometown. And yes, it was an iconic moment, but let's not forget, FFG went there with the full intention to heckle her. And she did heckle her at points. Like FFG even describes the staff giving her a look. FFG even describes the staff giving her a look, but they let her stay because there were only four audience members in attendance there. FFG didn't go to support Foodie. They are not friends. FFG went to the fashion show. FFG went to the fashion show to make fun of her and for people saying well like Pete's did is that well you know it's in FFG's hometown to that I would say so what so what you know Shmi you know good old Shmi could be having a party in FFG's neighborhood it doesn't mean that FFG has the right to just show up like you went there to embarrass foodie at that show and it wasn't right the second instance of uh ffg cow tipping is with foodies is with foodies best friend shannon so if ffg was a man Let's just say if S Jam, who is a man, who is a a male foodie fan, had befriended Shannon to get information about foodie, if any man had done that, they would be called a creep. The only reason that FFG gets a pass for this is because she's a woman. She befriended Shannon 
She knew Shannon and Foodie were on, the, were on the outs. She knew that Shannon was pissed at Foodie because of the whole Nader situation. She knew that Shannon was in a bad way. And Shannon has been vulnerable in a variety, in a variety of ways. And FFG each time has used that to her advantage. And she's weaseled her way into Shannon's life just to get more behind the scenes information on Foodie Beauty and I don't care what anyone says FFG preyed on Shannon and that was and still is and will always be gross in every way imaginable uh, befriending Shannon was a psychotic move and I there is no way in F to me, the FFG can justify that. It's psychotic. No sane person would do that just to get one up on Foodie. But yet again, FFG is unhinged. Let's move on to the final bit, and that's the dispensary stuff. So what gives a complete stranger like FFG the right to go around Cornwall like Olivia Benson with Foodie's picture, you know, going round to dispensary stores saying, have you seen this woman? Like, what on earth is going on? And why does FFG feel like she's owed um, Foodie's dirty secrets or Foodie's life story? We all know that when Foodie gets back to Canada or when she gets back or when she's in Thailand or on holiday, we all know that she's high. So why, why get a picture and go around to dispensaries, you know, asking questions like you're a government official? You know, it's deranged, it's disturbing, and FFG has no right to cow tip um, Foodie Beauty's life upside down she's proudly obsessed with foodie beauty and she clearly has a god complex and her friends her family amy flowers they need to sit ffg down and tell her that is en that enough is enough and that she needs to stop cow tipping it's absolutely insane and you need to she needs to get a hobby and a hobby that doesn't revolve around obsessing over a death fat get a proper hobby Okay, guys, um, enough of me, enough of, enough of me talking about FFG. Now we're going to go on to Foodie's video of when she first got back to Kuwait after the scandal. Let's take a look. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go on to Foodie. And this was when she first went back to Kuwait um, after the scandal. And this is just something that I wanted to cover um, before I go on to her more, before I go on to her more recent ones. So let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> hey there, beezers. Well, hello, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So as you can see, I'm back here in Kuwait. The uh, in Again, again, why? Infamous curtains there. So, um, yeah, I'm back in Kuwait, and I thought I would talk a bit. I didn't film any of my journey home really i don't think so i'm i was so tired and out of it that i don't even remember what i filmed but i'm finally here and when i tell you that this journey is probably the worst one it was just but yet you, you keep on doing it and to be fair the scandal was the best excuse not to go back but yet you continue to go back and i don't understand why i mean yeah it's desperation but every single thing that i had fear about with traveling as a fat person happened to me and um i i swear allah was testing me and you know what i got through it so i learned the lesson here that 
even if something is like really hard, you can still get through it. Basic, but so good to have and valuable in life because we're going to face problems. I mean, trying to avoid them is probably more of a waste of time than learning how to deal with them. And because of what I went through on this trip, I've learned that, you know, I can get through these things. No problem. They're not fun too, but they're not meant to be. So I'll show you my big surprise after. Um, so stay tuned, watch the whole video till the end because somewhere in the video I'm going to put, you wait till you see like, I don't know if they're called renovations, but everything done to the place. Okay. So yeah, yeah, she's right. It's like new here. All right. So um, basically what happened was, you know how I booked like kind of in haste, just like last minute because I'm impulsive like that. I was like, no, I can't sit here anymore and just be depressed and like I have to come home and, and just be at my place and everything like that and deal with, you know, what we're dealing with together and everything everything like that. So I said, you know, to Salam, my husband, I said, book me a flight ASAP, uh, you know, just ASAP. Like Salah was probably crying. After that phone call, he probably cried his eyes out, probably in, in Allah's arms with Allah and his wife, they all, all three of them were probably crying. Like in the next couple of days. So I left on the 3rd of January and the flight was full. Like it was, at, it's after holidays, it was a full flight. I wasn't even able to, to buy two seats if I even wanted to, <laughs> okay? So, um, well, we know that you want to, but can you afford two seats? Even the business class was booked because I was like, okay, so, you know, business class is not as expensive as first class. Uh, you know, I could maybe justify that it has a bigger seat. It's private. Next time, I think I will. <laughs> and then I can give like a review of it. So anyway, so um, they're like, sorry, ma'am, it's full. So I'm like the whole time I'm freaking out i was so nervous of like i'm going through scenarios like okay um how bad am i going to be encroaching on the person next to me um is it going to be you don't care about that you don't care a huge man because then you know if it's a very tiny person that might be okay um well wow. it, it's not okay because if they're tiny your weight is going to be taking up their space liners leaking because it's not waterproof so anyway i had to take my car park it then i had to take a taxi to the ottawa train station then then a bus like a charter bus to montreal airport okay the pierre elliott trudeau airport and on the way the cab driver was like telling me that you know everything is so bad in canada right now with like food prices and poverty and he said that he went to the grocery store and he went into the bathroom and there was like a chicken half eaten chicken and apparently the guy coming out said i left you some so people are actually this is really sad people are taking food like rotisserie chickens into the bathroom and eating them and just not paying you know which is probably honestly less risky than walking out with the detectors so anyway um yeah that was interesting conversation um so then i you know my my flight was at 8 55 um you know you always board earlier than take off so um i got on the plane and it was one of those you know how you have like there's like three rows of seats in the plane um left and right there's like rows of three and then in the middle there's a, a row of four seats well, luckily I had the aisle seat so that I could spill out if I wanted to, except when dinner service is coming. But sitting beside me was this grumpy looking younger man, like younger. Um, yeah, but foodie, if you saw, if you saw that you were sitting next to someone like you, wouldn't, wouldn't you be grumpy too? Man from India. And he was just like, um, how did you know that he was from India? Did he tell you that he was from India? Or did you just assume that he was from India? And I know he's from India because I heard him talking to the person beside him. Okay, because we all know that you're racist and ignorant as fuck. So, you know, I'm glad that you clarified that. So anyway, he was like younger. He wasn't too big. So that was good. Uh, so... I was like freaking out. Everyone's looking at me. I was like one of the last people to get on the plane and I asked for an extender. So I had to kind of like 
you know, be like, excuse me, as I take my my seat belt and plug it in. And anyway, finally, when I sit down, um, that was the moment. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down. This is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for, the moment I'm so scared for. And boom, it was okay. <laughs> like, I actually, so the seats in the Qatar plane are actually a bit bigger than the Emirates because in the Emirates, I remember, like, I had trouble with the handle going down unless I lost a bit of weight. I don't know. I don't think so, but anyway, the, the bars came down. It was like a bit snug, but like with the seatbelt extender, I was fine. We actually weren't even really touching, which really surprised me. So I thought, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> and I think I like, this is like a test I'm glad I went through because it showed me that, you know, it's one of my biggest fears and I was fine. Okay. So I was okay this time. I was happy. Um, the dinner service table doesn't come out all the way so mm. it comes out it came out halfway for me like it folds once and then twice out so I could fold it unfold it once and I probably could have gotten away with a tray of food being on it but I didn't want to like I don't know I had a fear about that and I didn't want to use the washroom so I yeah but there are times when you're going to need it foodie literally did not eat I had drinks, a lot of drinks. I didn't eat. I didn't go to the bathroom for 12 hours straight. I just in and out of like consciousness, not sleep because I don't really sleep if I don't have my CPAP. Like I don't, I just keep getting woken up <laughs> by my breathing. So anyway, the flight actually went by really quickly. I don't know by some miracle. I swear I was just like, it went by really quickly. And um, I watched the movie Psycho, like the original, with <laughs> with Anthony Perkins. Yeah, the original is the best, in my opinion. Perkins, the guy beside me was just kind of like looking at my movie, like, what the heck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he looked, um, he looked a bit like he'd been through some things in life like a bit rough on the you know on the edges so I thought okay good he's been through some things so he'll he'll get through sitting next to a fat person on a plane <laughs> but what does that mean he looks like he's been through some things maybe he's just seen you and that's had a terrible effect on him foodie so um that was that and then I was just I was so tired because I didn't sleep so and you didn't pee either which is really worrying for sure, if I have to fly like super long flight like that again, I'm going to get business. Like if, if there's any available because on Qatar, they sell out quick because they're so like they're one of the best business classes and you can plug your CPAP in there so I can sleep <laughs> and, you know, it's private. You don't have to worry about anything. So anyway, um, so after the 12 hours, like, tell me you're having money issues without telling me you're having money issues by the time I got to Doha and really if Salah really loved you wouldn't he give you the extra money for business class I mean since he's a businessman who's making his own money he could spare to give you some uh, I was so tired I just saw the first trolley driver guy and I'm like I need to get to my gates I only had like a two hour um and some odd minutes transfer time and it went by really quick we boarded a bit early so uh yeah that again I, I didn't even care at this point I was like whatever seat I'm assigned whatever because I'd gone through 12 hours of it I can get through an hour right so I was sitting beside a very small woman and I had so much room so Qatar definitely I, I heard one plus size influencer say they like Emirates for the best international flight for plus size people I say Qatar is for sure Sorry, there's a fly somewhere. I got him when we were washing the windows, like from the outside. If you don't wash your windows here, like um, the the sand dust will make them very dirty quickly. And Salah has really long arms, so he helps me with that. What are you doing? Yeah, catch the fly. Make yourself useful. <laughs> Baby girl. Okay, the cat hates you. Please stop. This is embarrassing. I love Persian cats because from the side like that, their side profile, 
It looks like they have no face. It's just smush. Smushy smush. Get the fly. Please? <laughs> anyway. I find with cats, you're always cheering them on to hunt, and then whenever they get the bug, they just pat at it and torture it. Anyway, all of this was worth it because when I was, you know, getting out of the luggage area, just tired, hungry, sweaty, just miserable, you know, I had my husband greeting me and it was so nice to get in, you know, greeting me with feces covered hands, I guess. The car, the new car. <laughs> that you bought <laughs> not the key <laughs> and just oh coming home and i have to say now really being back and forth a few a couple different times this feels more like home for me right now so the biggest thing the biggest thing when i came home and our apartment door was opened i want to almost cry because i didn't even recognize our place it was such a big shock um, I'll show you our, like, Salah basically redecorated the entire place. Um, but the question is, did he re-renovate or redecorate for her or for the multiple women that were going to come by? Well, the living room and the bedroom and then um, Harry, we call it Harry's room, <laughs> Howie's room um, is pretty much the same. But we have a lamp for that place now. We have a new lamp, but that's about it <laughs> for that room. So I'll show you here um, the new living room. We're not going to show our bedroom. We have a brand new bedroom set in the bedroom. Why not? She, show she showed it the last time. And oh my gosh, you guys, the bed is such an upgrade. Because I showed you in our old apartment hall. Yeah, she showed it in the last apartment in our old apartment hall, you saw our bedroom once, that bed, you know, wasn't really, really comfortable, but it was big enough. So for, you, for you, oh my God. So this is such an upgrade. Like it's the plushiest mattress and- the, And we can't see it, no? The bed is a huge storage bed from Ikea, has like a lot of storage shelves. She likes to sleep in some of them. Um, has an area like a big thick ledge I could put my CPAP and everything whatever you know um, so we also have like a huge new wardrobe has like that like you know is it hydraulic I don't know where you, like it doesn't smash the drawers when you close they close themselves a bit and it's all a mirror it's beautiful and then we have um, the living room so I'll show that to you now so here it is, our new living room. Look how different and amazing this looks, guys. We have a slightly different color scheme, although we still did keep some of the old, but we have a brand new, larger carpet. This is sorta new, but we kept this little organizational cubby thing. I really like it. And here we have a little dining set. I didn't even know we had room for a dining area, but a little Guys, those chairs aren't big enough for her. That alone should tell Foodie that Salah did not buy that table set and did not buy those chairs with her in mind. Little four-seater. And um, I love these little fake lights inside, but these little jars of lights that Salah picked out, they're so cute. All right, and here we have the new... So it looks nice, but Salah didn't renovate for her. He renovated for Kybella, D didn't he? I mean, that's what the interwebs are saying, but like, he didn't know that she was going to come back this early. He was getting ready to cheat. That's why he renovated the place. Sofa. It is a traditional type of Dioania style um sofa set and it kind of wraps around the whole living room i really love the color it kind of brightens up the room and goes well with the carpet and here we have a table set that comes with a large table and three smaller tables 
And the cool thing is you can remove the tables and put them anywhere you want. We have one in the corner with the lamp. And we have Bakur, Quran, and a nice roses decoration in the center of the table. And obviously the best part about this condo is the seaside view. It just adds that, that touch, you know. There's also this wall decoration that Salah picked out. The walls are, are pretty plain, considering. I thought there'd be more on the wall. Also matches with everything, and I just really like the style of it. It's cool. And of course, the cat loves all the new furniture. Um, she's so cute. Look at her. Oh my gosh. And in case you're wondering, here's my big boy getting his big daily peanut. He loves peanuts, and he likes to use those little choppers of his to open the shell. Oh, I missed my cute mouse rat, big hamster boy. Yes, I did. And this was our first breakfast together, a traditional Arabic breakfast. That, that's all for her, isn't it? All of that is for her. I don't think... I don't think Salah got a look in with this meal. Fist with falafel, different kinds of jubin or cheese. Patsia, which is hummus with full. And we had some sandwiches there and some fatah. It was very, very delicious. You know how much I love the falafel. Oh, in the middle of the cheese platter, it comes with jam and it has tomatoes and zaatar and olives and uh, all kinds of things. It was so delicious. If you haven't tried halloumi with jam, on bread you have to it's so good and i usually just take a falafel and dip it and there you go yummy and this is in the evening i just wanted to show you our ceiling lights which also kind of match with the color scheme of our living room so yeah this is um very typical kind of style here for the middle east um I mean, it looks nice, but it's not for her. Remember, he was planning to cheat. He got exposed and she came back early. So, I mean, this was for several other women. All this beautiful designs, um, the ceiling, the, the um, living room setup. The, the, this was all for the multiple women that he was cheating on her with. They're, they're not, it's not for her. I mean, it's only a surprise because she came back early. For like gatherings or diwania, they call it. And it's like kind of wraps around the whole room. I really, really, really love it. So it's very nice. It's a bit low to the ground, but some of them are on the floor, you know? So yeah, so my, my trip home was arduous. It was very testing. And I... Uh, really need to get healthy so that i can do things like that like travel you really just need to stop going to kuwait that that's what you really need to do oh and i mean traveling for anyone even healthy people it's stressful you know my, my body hurts a bit from sitting for so Ag agreed so long i did the compression stockings worked because my feet are not swollen at all I'm so happy. So I got home and I had, I was just like, wow, you did all this work like in such a little time, you know? So like within a day, he just went. Well, yeah, but he had Kybella to impress, didn't he? Shopping for everything and then pl like placed everything. Like, I, I don't think he did that like just yesterday. People are going nuts in the streets today. Sorry for the noise. If you can hear that. What are you doing? What do you do me? So then I had a shower and just oh, got in the new bed. But a shower with help from who? Because I, I can't see Foodie having a bath or having a shower without some kind of help. Like, is Salah helping you out? With the nice new sheets and oh, it was so amazing. Just an amazing night and yeah, an amazing night <laughs> um, being home. So the cat, the pets were so happy to see me. I'm just 
I feel so, so, so happy right now. So, sure. Um, sure, foodie, I believe you. Julia hasn't looked at you since this video has started, and that was 20 minutes ago. But yeah, sure, I believe that she's happy to see you. I guess that's about it. So thank you for uh, watching this video. And as much as- is, is she already high? As I enjoyed showing you our new home. It feels like a new home. It feels so different. Like it's crazy. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, guys. Seller's obviously, obviously trying to sell that he renovated for her, but I don't think that's true. Like, he probably renovated for Kybella because he really thought that she was coming over. Okay, guys. Uh, that's the end of the video. See you in the next one. I mean, it's just crazy that she would go on this terrible flight just to go back to a cheetah is completely insane. But, you know, this is foodie's life now, I guess. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening.